Hello and welcome to the Romance Track here at Continual. Tonight we are talking about getting warm and cozy with winter romance. But before we dive into that, let's let our wonderful authors introduce themselves, starting with Gabby. My name is Gabby Gray. I write uh, contemporary gay romances, sometimes with some little paranormal elements. All right, Janet. Hi, I'm Janet Walden West, and I write urban fantasy and contemporary and paranormal romance. Susan. Hi, I'm Susan Scott Shelley. I write contemporary romance, um, mostly mostly uh, LGBT right now, um, but I have some MFs going further back, and I mostly write about. I try to fit sports in anywhere I can, but and that's okay. Great. And I'm Gail Z. Martin and Morgan Bryce. As Gail, I write epic fantasy and urban fantasy. As Morgan, I write urban fantasy, male, male, paranormal romance. So lots of ghosts and, and things that go bump in the night. But uh, I also love the winter. And uh, so got to include that wherever I can. What are some of your favorite holiday or winter romance tropes? Either ones that you you've, you've used or ones that you enjoy when you're reading or watching uh, a movie, what are some of the ones that bring you back time and again? Janet? Um, I love a good Scrooge. If you've got, it doesn't matter if it's a hero or your heroine, but if someone is absolutely grumpy and hates this season and take your gingerbread and go away, and then in the end, they have a happy holiday, I'm there for it. Okay. Susan? So I like, this is fun because I'm a total summer baby and I don't actually like being out in cold, wet ice. Like I live in Philly and we get that a lot, but I like reading on like snowed in, stuck somewhere, or actually like things like holidays that are kind of set in the city. Um, so like my favorite, favorite all time holiday movie is Christmas in Connecticut, where she's playing that she's, she's this, she knows how to be this, this most amazing homemaker and she doesn't have a clue how to do anything. Um, it's just, it's, but yeah, so it's just kind of stuff like the funnier, the better, but. Okay, Gabby. I'm with there with Susan with the kind of forced proximity only I'm not a city gal. I'm very much a girl of the country. So I like the cabin in the woods where the guys are stuck and the, you know, it's snowing and they can't get out and they have to bond. That's kind of my thing. Okay, Roland, welcome. Um, we were just talking about uh, making introductions. So introduce yourself, please, and tell us what your favorite winter or holiday romance trope is, either that you've written or that you just enjoy uh, in something somebody else has written. Well, first of all, Gabby had me at uh, Cabin in the Woods. I like that. That's best place to, to have uh, Christmas and holidays. I'm all about Christmas in New York, though. Uh, and I've written one one holiday romance set in New York, and I'm writing another one right now. Actually, it's like Christmas in New York is just magical. So that's that's my thing. And introduce yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got caught a bit short by my kids. My name is uh, is Roland Tube. I write under a pen name uh, Simone Scarlet, but I'm also starting to write romance novels under my own name, and um, I try and sort of bring together. Uh, adventure books, old fashioned adventure books like The Saint and James Bond and stuff like that with romance, because I find as a middle aged guy, when I write adventure stories, they are completely flat and boring. And they've been written so many millions of times before by so many different middle aged white men. But when you bring in the frame of romance novels, it just reinvigorates everything because for me, doing the the um, convention of like a chapter from the hero's point of view and a chapter from the heroine point of view, immediately like the Bond girl gets elevated to fifty percent or more of the narrative, which changes everything. And so, so my complete crazy weird obsession is I basically write adventure stories and action movies as romance books, but I love it and it's what I do. That works. Well, and you also just gave me a great segue into the next question, which is, what do you think is the most romantic location that you've written about or that you've been to? And let's start this one with Susan. So I actually haven't traveled all that extensively, 
but um, my favorite, I think, roman romantic that I've been to um, in, was in Vermont. But when I was a kid, and like I am definitely a city girl, but I, I did really like being out there with all the mountains and, and trees and have some snowfall. And I think that's pretty romantic. But other than that, give me a big city because I just, I like love in the city. I don't know. Okay. Gabby. Um, I haven't traveled much either. I have to say that um, going out in the forest around Christmas time and just being surrounded by nature in the woods, there's a theme here, um, especially on a moonlit night can just be phenomenal, especially if it's a full moon. Wow, it's just beautiful with the snow. Okay. And does that, is that, are either of those for, for either of you, are those settings you've used in your books or just settings that you enjoy in other books or movies or? For, for me, I've actually written about uh, several people stuck in snow in winter time. And I used to live on a huge property by the lake uh, with woods. So I'm very much a nature girl. Okay. Susan? So I haven't set anything in Vermont yet. I have a lot of my books set in Philly where I live. So that's the, I don't think I have a, no. My, so my, my, I have one romance set in Buffalo, New York. So that's still city, but you know, a little bit smaller. Oh, it's also where you can get snowed in, really good. Yes, yes. <laughs> Janet, how about you? Um, I agree with Gabby. I'm kind of a country holiday girl. I am just at the foothills of the Smoky Mountains. And I also do not like cold and snow as a general rule, except right around that little time in December when it is so pretty and you get to sit by a nice fire and have all of your friends around. So I think that is the most romantic Christmas. How about you, Roland? Um, it's, I, I'm a country guy as well even though I love these cities I have to admit that when I moved to America like Susan when you were talking about Buffalo uh, like upstate New York to me is just one of the most gorgeous places in the world and when it's snowing and stuff like that it's just so so beautiful so you know I I have been writing holiday romances set in the city but to me it's like a small town in upstate New York is like the most perfect place in the world to, to have the winters and I actually do write a series in upstate New York, um, but it's got a lot of shifters, so they don't care if it gets cold. And uh, <laughs> Lucky them. <laughs> yes. And of course, it's a beautiful place, but I think two of the most romantic locations um, that I've been to, and, and one of them I've, I've written in, is uh, Charleston, South Carolina, or Savannah, Georgia. Just the architecture, the, the palm trees, the lights, yeah, they're... There's a reason they both end up on, you know, the top 10 list for honeymoon destinations and the carriages and, you know, very, very uh, super romantic. No snow. Not going to get a whole lot of snow, but uh, they got white sand beaches. You can, you, you, it's still white and fluffy, so it, <laughs> it, it can work. Um, all right. So fess up. Are you Hallmark? fans for the the christmas movies every year and do you have favorites if not a hallmark movie some other holiday romance movie uh roland start us off oh i was just thinking i was i was you, you caught me short there i was just thinking i love love actually that's a holiday movie isn't it because that's set around christmas mm -hmm. i just think that was mm -hmm. so lovely because you had all of the different love stories and they all co-joined and they're all co-mingled and stuff and to me that just that's one of the the ones i love because it's like having five romance stories all crammed into one okay janet i'm probably going to lose my romance writer card here but i am not a hallmark movie fan i try every year i put it on my little streaming service and I swear I'm going to get to the movies and every year I do not. So. And That's perfectly fine. Do you have another holiday movie that, you know, says wrong to you? This is probably a look inside my head, but my favorite holiday movie is uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Hey, that works. It's a classic. 
It really is. And I get very, very um, uptight if they cut off ending credits and I don't get to hear the song and see the little sleigh and reindeer shot into the sky. Ruins my whole Christmas. Okay, Gabby. I'm going to admit that Christmas is not my favorite time of year. So I have to say that I don't spend a lot of time watching the Hallmark movies. Uh, my favorite Christmas movie of all time is It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart, which you might not immediately perceive as a romance, but I think the enduring love of his marriage and it being his beacon, his shining star through that film, that really to me made it romantic and it, it was just such a profound film. So that's where I go every Christmas. Okay, Susan. I, like Janet, also do not watch the Hallmark movies. <laughs> and as I said, so my favorite Christmas movie of all time is Christmas in Connecticut because it's it's it has everything. It has I really I, I I'm good with words. Just right now they are escaping me, but it's it's just a bunch of holiday hijinks and it's Barbara Stanwyck and it's it's fabulous. Um, and that's I don't know. I kind of want to live in that if I could for a little bit. That would be great just to have a whole snowy area, have animals, it has like, you know, some farm animals in the background. You've got your soldier coming home from the war and she's supposed to marry somebody else and she falls in love with him and she can't cook a thing. And it's just, it's the best. I think it's, I don't know, I, I need that to be remade. Although I don't know if anybody could get it as perfect as that is. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with some classics. First off, I, I do believe that Die Hard is a Christmas romance because not only is it set at Christmas, but he's trying to get home to his wife, which how romantic is that? I wrote Die Hard um, as a Christmas romance. There you go. I, I love um, Last Holiday with Queen Latifah because, you know, here's this, this person who is not... Um, not dared to live until she thinks that she's going to die and then she throws caution to the wind and all of her dreams come true and and uh it's just it's just a fun movie and then i'm gonna say um well two more real quick one is a christmas carol because bob cratchit and his wife you know endure everything together as a couple and and that's pretty romantic and then uh classic white christmas uh the, the dresses are gorgeous yeah. there's lots of dancing and <laughs> You know, it's um, it's schmaltzy and it it's an older movie, but uh, boy, those those red outfits with the white trim are something else. So, what about uh, let's talk about the ro the holiday romance settings that you've written about, and uh, where have they been? What's been going on? Um, how do your characters celebrate or not celebrate the holidays, Janet? Um, I have had holidays everywhere from Southwest Arizona, where you're not going to get a white Christmas, to um, the mountains around Tennessee. And one of the, my favorite story, it is a short story that I did. I based it on a giant bed and breakfast um, that is here in Tennessee. It's called Blackberry Farm. And it is just absolutely gorgeous. So I threw in like um, some serial killers and a murderous Kelpie. But it is still Christmas. Nothing says Christmas like a murderous Kelpie. Uh, <laughs> you know, to each his own. How about you, Gabby? Um, the first book I ever published was set in Vermont. Susan will be happy to know. <laughs> Um, and it was, uh, just, it's called, it's a, I'm big on winter solstice. So it was a winter solstice book set in a little cabin in Vermont. Uh, the next Christmas book I did, um, was set in, uh, Northern British Columbia in winter, again, around the solstice. And finally, uh, I have another book that was also set in British Columbia. So a bit of a Canadian gal here. Okay. Susan. So I have two Christmas stories. The first is set in like, right around Buffalo. It's got a toy maker where they make children's toys. It's a company. 
and he's sworn off love and of course this assistant comes in and she can't get enough of Christmas. She's just decorating everything. She decorates his office. And she makes him fall in love with the holiday again. And then my other one is my hockey series in Buffalo. So I said I'm in Buffalo because my husband's from there. So I'm, you know, tribute out to him. But um, this one, it's these two guys. It's their second book. And this is their first holiday together. And it's the one hero adjusting to being in a new city and what Christmas, they're both trying to give each other the perfect Christmas, but disasters kind of keep happening. So it's, I don't know. I enjoyed that one a lot. Um, knocking trees okay. over, that kind of stuff, but yeah. How about you, Roland? I was just thinking, if your romance books don't have disasters happening, then they're not really romance books. That's the whole point, isn't it? <laughs> that's the that's the thing that makes them so addictive you don't want to experience that yourself but you love to read characters going through that so um i wrote a, a christmas novel it was called codename mistletoe and um it was kind of like die hard as a romance novel with some changes there was uh this um girl who was trying to pay her way through school and so she for one night she decided to join a troupe of exotic dancers uh, for a big corporate party in the, the top floor of a skyscraper in Manhattan. And then terrorists took over. But it just happened that the the big, beefy uh, male uh, exotic dancer happened to be a former SAS officer. And so she and he get together and have a wild romp as they uh, they take take back the place from the terrorists. And of course, they fall in love. And uh, it was just such fun to write it because I, I love like taking something familiar like that and having a new spin on it. And uh, uh, I just love New York and at, at Christmas time. So it was it was a fun thing. And I think that's the thing about writing holiday stuff is a lot of the time it's really fun and indulgent and you just get to to indulge yourself. And I think your readers enjoy being indulged. I, I agree completely. Um, I've got a couple of, of romance, uh, Christmas romances myself. Lucky Town is uh, in my Badlands series and it's the first time that Simon and Vic have gone home to meet Vic's big Italian family. And Simon comes from this very staid, very emotionally closed down small family. And Vic's got six brothers and sisters and, and cousins galore and food out the wazoo and they're all cops. And um, so Simon gets to see his badass homicide detective boyfriend as somebody's little brother who is getting ragged on by his, his siblings, which is, is kind of fun. Of course, you know, there's also a murder and supernatural entities. Where did the inspiration for that come from with the big family? Um, we lived in Pittsburgh for 10 years and that was very normal. Um, yeah. Lots of people have those big families to come home to. And so it's kind of a shock if you're bringing your uh, significant other for the first time and there's all these people. So yeah, that, that was that was kind of real life. Uh, Christmas at Canem Castle and uh, New Year, the upcoming Ring in the New at Canem Castle. There's we, along with um, five to seven other romance authors, we've created a fictitious castle in England in a fictitious town, and we set uh, all of our stories in that castle for a particular special event, whether it's Christmas or New Year's or whatever. And so I, the Christmas one had Eric and. Um, had Tegan Anthony from the Deadly Curiosity series and the ring in the new has uh, uh, Simon and, and Vic from Badlands and so you've got a bit of a fish out of water there because they're they're in another country of course there's some sort of haunting or old mystery or scandal and and there's supernatural stuff but that's that's kind of fun because you're you're also seeing Christmas in a whole different way and uh, then Dark Rivers happens at Christmas in Pittsburgh, lots of snow, also monsters, and they're trying to stop a dark witch. So, you know, they come really close to dying, but they don't. So what says Christmas more than living through it? Um, I, th I think that goes beyond just monsters. I think that's just spending time with your family. <laughs> well, you know, that's one of the most dangerous parts of the season. If, especially if you have a dysfunctional family that can really really make christmas interesting are there any other kind i mean <laughs> i've heard rumors i've heard rumors but it's, it's really kind of a unicorn isn't it um and then that's what makes uh, fiction go round so how do you or your characters 
celebrate the holidays? Do do you or they decorate? What do you do? What do your decorations look like? Um, you know, personally, I believe that if you can't see my Christmas tree from space, it doesn't have enough lights on it. It should look like a CarMax lot. Um, <laughs> start with a pre-lit tree, add another 4,000 lights, and you're getting close. But, you know, maybe not for everybody. So uh, how do you and or your characters celebrate the holiday? Uh, Gabby? Um, well, in, in my current book, um, he doesn't celebrate the holiday. He's not into Christmas at all. He doesn't put up a tree. He doesn't decorate the hearth. He goes to his sister's place because it's expected of him and he'll he'll trim his beard for the family photo, but that's it. Like he's just got no interest in Christmas whatsoever. That kind of mirrors my own perspective. I don't decorate. I go out and look at other people's stuff and go, ooh, pretty, but not me. Well, that saves you having to put it away. So there's really some wisdom to that. Because if you decorate, there's the whole pre-decorating, then there's the decorating, then there's the enjoying, then there's the, oh gosh, we've got to undecorate. So you might you might be onto something there. Susan? So like Gabby, I enjoy going out and looking at what other people have done. And I oh, my brother puts up an amazing tree, so I go take pictures of his and pretend it's mine. But I, I live in a pretty small apartment, so my tree is a little ceramic tree that you put a little like light pegs in. Um, and maybe like a wreath on the door. My characters, so my, my, my hockey boys have a tree and that's about it, which is pretty much all they could handle. Um, and then in my, my other series, she goes all out for her house and her candy cane pens and she decorates, she puts little trees on the desks at, at, the, at the office and she can't get enough. But yeah, for me, I'm pretty minimal, but that's also a space thing um and not having a lot of storage but i would be the same way with if i could have a big tree it would be a big tree with a million lights if space would allow it so okay roland um i think as a curmudgeonly old scotsman i'm i've never really been into decorating i think my characters aren't into that but i think one of the reasons i said it in new york is because you can't at christmas time you can't go anywhere in new york without it being like christmas and i think one thing i didn't even realize was a theme as I think about it is the fact that it's like you exist surrounded by Christmas you're not really into the Christmas spirit you're all a bit bare humbug and I think at the very end though there's always going to be a moment and I think I feel like this because I'm not really a Christmassy person where you stop and you have the Christmas lights and the music and something and there's just just for a moment everything's like a postcard and you stop and you appreciate and you're like wow Christmas is really something special isn't it and then you go off and do whatever it is you were doing but it's it's those little moments and I think that's what's that's what I try and put my characters appreciating because I think you know everyone tries to go all out at Christmas but sometimes Christmas is personified by just like one moment one person's smile or one piece of music or one smell or something and once you appreciate that you might as well have the whole of Christmas crammed into it okay Jen um I'm going to reveal my shallow shallow soul because if it's sparkly and gold and shiny it's going to go all over my house for christmas <laughs> so um the more glass balls and gold bows the better also when the kids came along i did have to kind of cut back because the only thing worse than a cat in a christmas tree is like small children around <laughs> the christmas tree i've had a lot of fun with my stories because um my characters tend to come from a, a very different background. They're kind of outsiders. So they come into these communities and they're like, you know, this is creepy. This, what are these people doing? What are they on? And I have, since a lot of my stories are set in smaller towns in Tennessee, I kind of went off of what some of the towns around us are like. You know, there are families who've been here since Moses was a child. And so they go all out. They have their lovely mansions and everything decorated. So we kind of spoof that a little bit in the books. I have to admit that, that we are that house. Uh, we are the house with all the lights on the bushes. We are the house with the two life-size light-up nutcrackers and the light-up deer and the light-up huge ornaments. And we've got a light-up otter. 
and um, three full-size Christmas trees in the house. And it, it's an extravaganza uh, because why not? Um, so yes, we are that house, but we're usually also that house for Halloween with the eight foot dragon with the uh, mechanical wings too. So it's kind of a pattern. Um, I love getting ornaments as souvenirs when we travel because then I don't have to dust them all year long. I get to look at them while the tree is up and then they go away and it saves on space. And um, so, yeah, we go totally over the top and um, this is kind of fun. Um, I, I enjoy it because then I get to sit and look at it. And we're not real fast about, we're, we get it up and then we leave it up for a while, uh, longer than is probably socially acceptable because I want to <laughs> look at it. And I'm too busy before Christmas to look at it. So I have all of January to look at it and then we can take it down. Um, so, and that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so winter is also a great time for warmth and cozy and sometimes that means food whether it is a true holiday meal or just something you like to have in on one of those you know early dark nights when it's cold outside but this is going to warm you up inside um susan what are some of your favorite or your characters favorite foods for the season okay so um honestly my favorite thing to do is really just to have a very enormous mug of coffee, which I, I drink too much of it. But if I, so if I'm actually making something, because a lot of my characters don't, two of them bake, the other ones, not really. Um, I think, so I have one who's a baker and he can make anything. And then his counterpart basically lives on fast food and junk food and cookies and I don't know it's kind of I think it's a pretty perfect arrangement you've got someone who can make that for you and then um if you've got somebody making homemade chocolate chip cookies for you then you don't have to have your little bag of store-bought but um I think for me one of the things I do make occasionally is chocolate chip cookies so I think most of my characters at least do that but a lot of them just drink too much coffee, which is sort of my There's no such thing. No. I know, I know. Oh. Roland, how about you? Um, for me, oh, I love like standing out in the cold, wearing some gloves and stuff like that, and then being around a fire. And I love bourbon. I'm uh, Janet, you're going to have to tell me all of your recommendations because it's all from your part of the world. But I... Um, there's nothing nice there's nothing nicer than a really cold night and a really fiery bourbon i know i'm scottish so i do like scotch whiskey but i just i would actually be sacrilegious and say i prefer bourbon and i love drinking bourbon on a cold cold night but in terms of the food it's all about like the big roast turkey or the the big roasted ham and gathering all around and just eating too much and so when you go outside it's kind of like a relief because you're you've got the meat sweats at that point so you go outside and have some bourbon in the cold and I uh, I just love that. It's it makes you feel like you can indulge because when you're going out and it's freezing cold, you're like, oh yeah, I'm just putting on some fat to protect me during the winter season. Very good, Gabby. I think eggnog was made by the gods. I think it's amazing. And this year it was available in my grocery store in October. Did a little happy dance in the dairy aisle. <laughs> Growing up, my my mom used to make these chocolate logs so it's melted uh, melted chocolate around marshmallows with um uh shredded coconut and i miss those and i'm planning to make one this winter nice jenna um around the holidays you can just walk by my house and you will probably get a sugar and bourbon high <laughs> I love baking. That sounds like the best time. <laughs> yes, Roland, you're coming over because one of my favorite things to make that the neighbors would probably, you know, come pick at my house if I did not do it was bourbon balls. We make those every year. Mm. And I do, you know, an alcohol free version for the kids that just has, you know, some flavoring in it. They don't know the difference. That is the big thing. I was thinking, what one word could you add to bourbon to make it sound better? And balls was obviously the, the, the correct word. Those are good. Those are real good. Those are dangerously good. 
Um, yeah, we uh, we do the the ham thing, and we have some side dishes that everybody expects now. Uh, but my husband's the one who really likes to bake. I do the turkey; he does the baking, and uh, so we end up we, we take uh, requests from our uh, adult kids when they're coming home and say, "Okay, what food do you want?" And we try to make sure it happens, and that usually includes. Um, there's this peppermint cake from uh, the Southern Living Cookbook, and, and it's got kind of a slightly peppermint icing, and you put little uh, pieces of, of peppermint on it, and it's, it's red and white, and it's, it's got uh, kind of a red velvet in the middle, and it's a fantastic cake, but my daughter, the first time she tried to make it for her new in-laws, couldn't get peppermint, so she thought, oh, it's a mint, let's do wintergreen. <laughs> it has gone down in history as the toothpaste cake because <laughs> it was not a, uh, an acceptable substitute. <laughs> Never do that. Never do that. If you can't get peppermint, just make it a white cake. So lesson learned, but that, that's kind of gone down in family history. Um, why do you think we love holiday romances so much? We've, we've admitted here that maybe in person, in real life, you know, the holidays might not be everybody's jam, but in in movies and books and, and TV, the holidays are, well, you know, shining with with lights and everything. Why is that? Um, Janet? I think there's just such an aura around all the holidays, especially Christmas. And it just seems like everyone is being kinder and more generous and looking you know for something special to connect with someone especially a special someone and it is just such an ideal setting for a romance like that um it is just like a beautiful way to end a year okay gabby i find it a very redemptive season so it's an opportunity if you've not had a good year to kind of put all that aside and take a step up and be a better person and whether it's giving or whether it's charity or just living a better life in that season. Okay. Roland. Uh, oh, I love that answer, Gabby. That was brilliant. To, to me, I think the reason the holidays are so special is because you end up being more in the moment in the holidays because there are things happening that stop and you kind of get out of your own head where I think as writers, we tend to, be all the time and you see the tree and you're like isn't that pretty and you eat the food isn't that nice doesn't that smell nice isn't the chill nice and because you're more in the moment I think you're just more receptive to other people and the positive things about other people and I think it just it forces you to see the positive in people which using the word forces makes it sound like a bad thing but I think you know that's the beauty of the holiday season you see the you see nice things in things that you wouldn't normally see mm -hmm. Susan so I think it's just, it's all about love. You know, it's the season of love. It's love for you doing things by buying things, doing like, like Gabby said, yeah, like, you know, charity, the service of doing things for other people. And it's, I think it's just, I don't know that you get, you know, it's the Christmas feeling is it's this, this warm, fuzzy, glowing kind of feeling that, you know, Scrooge finds at the end and that, you know, you're supposed to you know, keeping your heart all year round. And I think, I guess, I don't know. I just, I kind of look at it as it's maybe sometimes the only times of year that some people really show love if they don't know how to, like you said, with the, the Italian family was, you know, very demonstrative and then the other side wasn't. Like, that's totally my parents where, you know, like, so I think, I think this time of year just kind of makes, I don't know, it might be easier for some people to, show it i guess i don't know it may not be the best answer but i like the hopefulness of it you know by the time we get to the end of december the the days are really short the nights are really long it seems like it's dark when you get up and dark when you come home from work and it's just dark and then for several weeks you can drive around and see all these beautiful lights and all this decoration and you know it doesn't really serve a a purpose other than to make everybody happy why do you decorate the outside of your house when you live inside to make everybody happy and it's just kind of a reminder that yeah it's gonna be dark for a couple more months but 
the sun will come back eventually and we'll get spring and it, it really isn't hopeless. So I love the hope of that. Aside from everything else that goes with it, just the hopefulness of all of that. Well, folks, we have flown through our time as always. So uh, let's go around and let everybody know uh, what books you've got coming out or if you've got a holiday perennial book that you want to mention and where people can find you online. Roland. Uh, well, you could Google my name, but there's not a lot there. I write under the name Simone Scarlet MMA. You have to have the MMA. But uh, yeah, I, I'm sure I'm sure I'm a, around there. I'm just I'm so excited to look at uh, all of the other books. Janet, I think we've been in one of these before. And yes. I was like looking at all your books afterwards. So yeah. So um, anyway, thank you very much for having me. I'm really, really honored to be amongst all of you. <laughs> well, we love having you too. Gabby, how about you? Uh, I have a Christmas book coming out. It's a gay romance it's called Ginger Snapping All the Way. It's about a gay lumberjack ginger Scrooge. Can you say that one more time? Just because I want that full description again, because I think it's brilliant. Ginger Snapping All the Way with a gay lumberjack ginger Scrooge. And a visiting nurse and they're stuck in a snowstorm and of course sunshine meets grumpy and you know how it's going to end it comes out november 15th and it's available on all retailers and it has a special uh release price of 99 cents nice and where can we find you online uh gabbygray.com awesome janet um you can find me everywhere just under janet walden west Twitter, Facebook, BookBub, my website, and my first urban fantasy romance series came out this year, Region 2. Um, the second book just dropped last month, and the third will actually be a little bit after Christmas. It will be out in January. Okay, Susan. So you can find me at susanscottshelley.com, and so my Christmas book with my hockey players is Holding On Tight, and just had a release called Spiral, which again, I work in sports, rec league rugby, uh, MM romance, and um, with my co-writer Chantal Mare, who was on one of your panels earlier tonight. And our next book is Spark in that same series, and that comes out in January, and we're really excited for people awesome. to meet our boys. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty easy to find online at galesymartin.com and morganbrice.com. The social media is a variation of all of those names. Um, I've got a, a New Year's book coming out. I'm, it's that uh, fictitious castle in England with the multiple author collection. And uh, it's my boys from Myrtle Beach. So they're definitely a fish out of water in England. And they, of course, also run into a murderous ghost and they've got to stop him before he hurts anybody. So all of that and New Year's Eve. And then uh, my other new release is Trash and Treasure with a raccoon shifter and a possum shifter who fall in love and there are seductive donuts so uh read it for the donuts anyhow thank you all so much for spending the evening here and thanks to all of you for watching and listening there'll be more romance and more holiday fun coming up on continual so we'll see you online